Mr. Green. Voitot pankkitilillesi viidessä minuutissa. Hello, I'm Jan Stanfors, a.k.a. Nasty Suicide. Uh, you're watching Chaos TV. Okay, so hello everyone. Chaos TV is today here in Bar Luz in Helsinki, Finland, and we have Jan Stenfors, aka Nasty Suicide, as guest. So, first of all, hello and welcome to Chaos TV. How's your ye- interesting year been so far? Interesting. Yeah, hello from me as well. Yeah, it's been uh, rough and tough and uh, interesting. And well, you know, as you know, I, I do a lot of other stuff for, for a living nowadays that, rather than, than play music. But uh, so quite the gigs have been few uh, and uh, and so on like for everybody but uh, life goes on and it'll get better I'm sure so how much has this actually changed your life your normal daily life this coronavirus time well I mean my normal daily life I mean I work in the pharmaceutical industry so it, it has it's changed in a way that we can't work with uh, with the doctors and physicians in the same way as we used to, but uh, then again, it's a business that, that never kind of ceases to to work because uh, we all need medicines all the time. So that that need hasn't gone down. Uh, well, well, let's be, let's not get into that too much. Uh, there, there are things things happening there, of course, but but on the music side, it's been very quiet, and I I feel for. For my buddies, who who actually, that's their main living, and uh, um, musicians and and people who who organize gigs and and um, uh, technicians and all that. So uh, yeah, I, I guess I've had it easier than than most. So do you feel that actually Finnish government has handled this well when it comes to like music industry? Uh, when it comes to music industry, I mean I. You could, you could of course have uh, all kinds of opinions if you take that as an isolated uh, issue, but it, I guess you have to look at look at the big picture. And uh, I think most of us know that this is a, a common effort. It's a freaky situation. It's a bit like an apocalypse or something, <laughs> and it's a, it's a it's a science fiction movie, but it's real life, and uh, it's it's very rough. But uh, we have to do what we can. I, I'm not the right one to say whether whether they, they should be the regulation should be different or or not. But uh, I'm sure everything's done for a reason. So obviously you you aren't that active in the music business anymore. But what is it with you when it comes to like creativity? Do you still write songs on your own or or? I do a little bit now, yeah. I mean, I, there was a there was a time when I didn't at all, but um, but now I am kind of a little bit active. Yes, I mean, uh, I started writing, and we have a, a a band with with a family. I mean, everybody's called called Stanforce in in that that band, and uh, it, it consists of me and my brothers and uh, our kids and wives and whoever plays an instrument or, or uh, instrument or sings or whatever um, is welcome to, to uh, live out their dream as a musician so that's a fun project and and um, and it's pretty much the, the kind of music that I, I played well not the kind of music I played all my life but what I like playing nowadays but kind of bluesy rock uh, the, you know whatever country kind of thing and um, so that that's uh, in that way I can be as creative as I want to through that and um, we have we have uh, possibilities of doing recordings and things yeah, but my nephew is, is a uh, he's a technician or studying to be a, a technician so he's really skilled at, at recording stuff and uh, you know my brothers play they're really good players and my wife plays keyboards my my daughter is a really good singer so uh, yeah um, no problems there really so speaking about like your music you are about to like actually release a vinyl version of your 
like solo album uh, Vinegar Blood in November. Yeah. So where did this idea came from? Well, the guys from Rolling Records, they they contact, contacted me and just threw the idea and I, I, we started chatting and, and uh, talking about it and straight away it was it was it seemed like a, a bunch of guys that it's really easy to to do this with and, and I never felt that it, it, I wanted to hold back and think about it very much I thought for the first time it was like because people have suggested that why don't you put it out as vinyl vinyl's the thing nowadays and yeah, yeah. we'll buy it in, in vinyl and I wasn't that excited and uh, you know I, it seemed like well it's a bit of a project, you know. I had to start dealing with record companies and things, and I got other things to do. But with these guys, it was it was simple, it was easy, and uh, they just said, "Yeah, well, let's get on with it." And you have the material. I had the rights to the material, so it was no no problem sending it over to them. I let them get on with it, and of course, it's it's just a small batch of uh, vinyl records. But that's, I guess, the idea as well for them is to have a special kind of releases that otherwise wouldn't be happening or but, but still kind of uh, have some some interest so why wasn't it released as a vinyl when you released it in 96 was there like some specific reason it wasn't the time for vinyl that, uh, okay in those days uh, in 96 it, it, cd was um, was pretty much had, had come to stay okay uh, and, uh, okay so that was that the, time we, of we had spotify and things that then either uh, I don't think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think vinyl vinyl players have been sold. They've been thrown in the garbage bin in those days. And oh, okay. It's okay. It, it's kind of then only a few few kind of freaks who would like to collect or didn't want to give away their vinyls. Um, they kind of kept it alive, and now it's it's boomed again, and, and for a good reason. I mean, it's, I can now see the point myself as well. So obviously. There was an autobiography of Razzle released recently, so what kind of experience that was to be involved with that for you? The autobiography? Yeah. Uh, well, I wasn't, uh, but, but the other guys were. Uh, for me, it's, it's a bit difficult to go and uh, talk about other people. If I were, was to do my own autobiography, which I'm not going to about anyway, it, it's a bit, bit of a different thing. My experience of, the, of these uh, types of releases is, I'm not very interested. Okay, I was actually next going to ask you that now every member of the band has an autobiography instead of you. Yeah. But you said that you aren't not interested about releasing your own someday. Why? Uh, I don't see why I should really, to be honest. Uh, the day hasn't come yet when I, when I feel I have you know, the burn for, for doing that, for telling everybody what, what my life's been like. Uh, I don't... It's not something I, that I'm interested in. Have you actually read the other guys' biographies? Uh, as a result, I haven't. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I was actually going to ask you that is there something that is like left to say or do you feel that everything is already being said by the other guys about at least the band history? I'm sure they've said it all, and, and uh, I, there's nothing I can think of. Um, I don't know. Maybe there could be a, a, a different kind of story, but uh, how to get into it? Somehow we're so used to giving one side of the band, and and in one one kind of way, uh, dimension. <laughs> that I think we sometimes, or most of the time, we we lose the sight of bands as as people they act they're actually a bunch of normal guys uh, and, and that thing hasn't come out yet I don't think uh, I don't know if people are not interested in that then why should I go on talking about it what, what people are interested in is tables flying out of uh, balconies and landing on taxi cabs yeah yeah and that, rock and roll stuff and that's uh, I'm just not interested oh, okay <laughs> just not interested in that so but if, if there was a day when, when when it seems like people are interested in hearing about what who am I really or I don't, I don't think so but uh, maybe the other guys who are a bit more interesting than me <laughs> the, hearing that they actually actually they are uh, 
then yeah because I think every human life is interesting if you get into that so um, uh, hopefully there's one day a, s a story coming out of maybe Michael or Andy or whoever uh, that talks about the the human being behind all this shit <laughs> okay so obviously I guess you read the Tavastia Club turned 50 years I yesterday and there was some kind of like video greeting which Ville Valo had done for them right. so that's a le legendary club in Helsinki yeah. Yeah. what kind of memories does that club bring into your mind it's well, been quite essential I guess for Hanoroks at least yeah it was it was for me it was the first uh, uh, somehow I left in my memory as the first gig as Hanoroks uh, with uh, it was me and Michael and, and Stefan Piesnack and and uh, a couple of other guys uh, and uh, so I got up on stage on Tavastia stage which, which was legendary of course and uh, then I spot in the audience Albert Jarvin and that, that was a bit of a <laughs> you know I wet, wet myself I think and uh, <laughs> we, still we, we got on with a gig and uh, I think it was a good gig at least uh, yeah we were young and and, and messed up but still is that like your best memory when it comes to that specific club or is it just the first memory uh, that was the first memory so uh, when you ask about me memory that that's that's the one that jumps up and yeah uh, the one that i can pinpoint then uh, all uh, all other memories they kind of blend into each other so I'm, i'm not i'm not sure i can pick out another one for that place but obviously a very important very important place S So uh, next year, Hanoi Rock's debut album will turn actually like 40 years. So have you discussed anything about like really releasing it or or doing something around it or and first, what kind of album. yeah and what kind of memories do you actually have when it comes to that specific album? Well, it was uh, the first time I was in the studio making an album, so obviously it was it was really a big thing, you know, being able to. To stay there, and, and uh, before that, I've been in the st I was in the studio just doing one song, like a single or something. Okay. Uh, but uh, but that was the first time time actually making an album, and uh, yeah, it was a, a big learning trip for sure. So was it like exciting to go to a studio and and try the buttons and? Absolutely, yeah, and uh, spending spending more than one night there. I mean, spending a week or two. I can't remember how long we were in the studio, but still, and really getting to know the the people working there as well, the man behind the buttons and his dog. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of funny stories about that in those days. But yeah. So I. I heard and read also from like Finnish news quite many times that you have discussed about like the band and you are still quite good friends with each other so have you like ever seriously talked about doing something as Hanoi Rocks again or is it just a joke that you toss between each other or <clears throat> not for a while but we have every now and again yeah the, the question has come up from different directions and usually it, it, it ends up First, at first, it seems like uh, yeah, could be a nice, nice idea. But then we start thinking about it, and it's, it becomes like an impossibility. When you, playing uh, on stage is one thing, but there's so much other, so much more time you have to spend off stage when you play as a band that you have to really uh, respect each other and um, behave like um, you know as friendly as possible and it's never really seemed seemed that possible really okay so you don't you don't see it happening again or or do you feel that the door will be open to the very end well, you never know what's going to happen as long as we breathe uh, then uh, anything can happen i guess but uh, uh, but yeah uh, There was some kind of a reunion of Hanoi, but that wasn't a reunion. That was a new, new mix of the, the group, I guess, uh, with, with Mike and Andy. But uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem seem like it could happen now. No. So, what does the future hold for you, like music-wise? What kind of plans do you actually have, or do you have any plans? Is it just playing 
one-off shows every now and then my, or my plans are always kind of loose I, I, I go day by day pretty much or when it, when the day comes then I, I start thinking about it but I, I don't make long-term plans really I'm not that type of person but uh, well, one thing I, I, I've thought that when, when I when I um, retire from my pharma career <laughs> then then all I'm gonna I'm gonna do is play and uh, probably travel with my wife uh, but um, yeah that's it so then then I'm gonna be playing if I'm healthy then I'm gonna be playing a lot sure. so hey thank you a lot Jan for the chat and 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 all the best for tonight's show anything you want to say as last words to all the fans all over the globe watching this well I don't know uh, what can I say uh, let's just bear with it and uh, uh, hope that the vaccines and, and things are gonna sort things out for us and we can get back to rocking and rolling in the, in the usual get in the usual way